the topic for this morning session is a uh, introduction to cloud computing and cybersecurity, mainly focusing on uh, building a secure cloud environment. I am Kola Oliodurem, I'm a member of the infrastructure teams, and I'm excited to be here this morning. So let's get started. Uh, this morning, we'll be focusing on uh, the topics this morning are just uh, introduction to cloud computing, uh, move to introduction to cybersecurity, then uh, building a secure cloud environment. When then we talk about a a case study of uh, the Capital One data breach, slightly, then we move to question and answer session. So, firstly, what is a uh, Cloud computing. Cloud computing is the delivery of uh, computer services over the internet, allowing on-demand access to resources uh, like storage, application, you know, data storage, servers, databases, networking, and uh, software. Uh, I believe some of us are, are already familiar with this. Uh, then we have uh, types of cloud services, which are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Also, there are the development models. That is how uh, cloud computing are being de uh, deployed, which are public, private, and hybrid clouds. Uh, next, uh, we talk about uh, benefits of uh, cloud computing. Uh, so the benefits of cloud computing uh, includes uh, automatically adjusting uh, resources based on demand. That is uh, reducing costs. I mean, that is, uh, sorry, that is, uh, what do we call it? Uh, um, scalability, sorry. Then uh, reducing uh, capital expenditure, which uh, also means reducing uh, cost. Also, access to resources and services from anywhere. We could be a uh, flexibility or uh, mobility, however you see it. Then uh, it utilizes a uh, cloud-based backup and disaster recovery. That is uh, another part of the uh, benefit of uh, cloud computing. Uh, moving on. We we'll talk about let's talk about uh, what is cybersecurity. Cybersecurity involves the practice of uh, protecting systems, networks, and uh, programs from digital attacks. Uh, basically, we are what cybersecurity means is we are protecting our our, our resources that are online, uh, protecting it from uh, hackers everywhere. What are the importance of uh, cybersecurity? Uh, we talk about uh, data protection, privacy, business continuity, and uh, trust uh, reputation. I believe some of us are already familiar with some of these things. So let's talk about common cybersecurity threats. Malware is one of them, which includes uh, viruses, worms, Trojan horses, ransomware, and 
spyware. Also, we have phishing, which means uh, uh, a deceptive attempt, or uh, often through. Sorry about that. Uh, through emails. I mean, so they are stealing sensitive information by pretending to be a trustworthy entity. You know, when you receive a an email in your uh, in your email address in your inbox and or whatever, asking you to click on a, a link that resembles maybe your bank web address or just pretending to be who they are not. And immediately you click on that, the get hold of your computer or the get hold of your information. They are secretly accessing your information. Then uh, ransomware is another one, which is a malware that encrypts data and demands a ransom for its release, you know? The moment the ransom will find a way into your system, maybe by you mistakenly clicking something, clicking a link, or you installed an app that disguised to be uh, an app that you are already familiar with, they take hold of your data and encrypt them. And they, uh, they will start, the hacker will start asking you for money or asking you for a particular thing in order to release your uh, your data. Then uh, another one is a DDoS attack, which is a distributed denial of service attacks. Uh, this just overload a service with excessive uh, traffic. It will keep on pinging or sending requests to your to your application or a part of your networking device to the extent that it will become unavailable for those that really need it. Need it. So building a secure cloud environment. So uh, there are some strategy behind building a strategic, I mean, um, building a secure cloud environment. One of them is uh, to understand the shared responsibility model. What do we mean by the shared responsibility model? Uh, we need to understand the division of security responsibility between cloud provider and user we as the user. This uh, shared responsibility model um, talks about the security responsibility of cloud services, uh, cloud service providers rather, and their customers. So there is a, there is a strategy that says that the security of the cloud is the responsibility of cloud service providers, why the security in the cloud is the responsibility of uh, customers that are using the service provider. So what are the security of the cloud? Uh, security of the cloud can be uh, physical security of the data center. Uh, also, it could, it could be how they secure their hardware uh, and the and all their infrastructures in general. Uh, while uh, security in the cloud is uh, how you how you as a user protect your data, your identity and access management, then uh, application level controls and all that. Uh, the next one is uh, develop and enforce a comprehensive uh, security policy. You know, establishing a clear comprehensive security policies 
that is tailored to your organization's needs and compliance requirement is very, very important. Uh, we need to protect our data. We need to set up assets control, uh, incident response, compliance, and uh, the way employee conduct themselves. You know, uh, security bodies should also be aligned with uh, industry standards and uh, regulation. There are some standards and regulations that are that are, we are supposed to follow. Then uh, we are supposed to regularly review and update policies to to uh to address evolving threats. You know, uh, every time there are new threats out there. There are new ways, new approaches that people or hackers attack our resources in the cloud. Uh, the next one is employee training. Uh, employee has to be trained regularly to, to be aware of new trends in uh, cybersecurity in the, uh, and also about cloud. Then and, uh, the next one is uh, to have a, a an incident response plan so that whenever a situation happens, every employee or every uh, stakeholder knows uh, who or how they are supposed to undo such situation. The next thing they are supposed to do so that uh, everything can be and do it properly. Moving on, what are the best practices for cloud security? Like uh, I already mentioned uh, previously, so we have access control. We need to, we need to, uh, we need we need to maintain policies and. Uh, we need to control access of what resources uh, people gain access to. Uh, what a manager can have access to is not the same thing that uh, a floor member of a team should be able to have access to. So there are roles, there are users, you know, there are there is something they call a uh, uh, principle of least privilege, uh, which means you only have access to what you need. So you shouldn't be getting access to what you don't need per se. Uh, the next thing is uh, data encryption. We, we need to get our, our data encrypted, both at rest and in transit, yes. Protecting data at rest uh, and in transit using encryption to prevent unauthorized uh, access and ensure integrity of data. Uh, also, we need to conduct uh, regular security audits and vulner uh, vulnerability assessments so that we will be sure of uh, maybe there was a there is a port that. It's supposed to be closed or, uh, yes, that's supposed to be closed. Meanwhile, during configuration, maybe the the, the person in charge, uh, the owner of the infrastructure, infrastructure forgot, mistakenly forgot to, to close those spots. So exposing those spots to, to attacks from hackers. Also, another thing we need to we need to consider is patch management. We need to ensure that systems are and our application are regularly updated uh, because every now and then uh, applications get updates and uh, our OS, system OS also get updates. All these updates come so that uh, if paradventure hackers have been able to gain access or find a way to hack our system or the application, they send another update correcting whatever error they, have, uh, they might have committed or 
closing the bridges. So now let's talk about uh, tools and technology for cloud security. I've already mentioned identity and access management. Uh, there's information and event management system, which are tools for real-time analysis of security alerts. There is also intrusion detection systems. Uh, these are tools to detect and respond to potential security threats. There are also encryption tools, software and uh, software and uh, hardware solutions for encrypting data. All these uh, all these things are out there. You can always research about them. You can get more information about them. So let's talk about this uh, real world example of cloud security breach. Uh, this example is a um, is an example of uh, what happened to a, a company, the Capital One. It's called Capital One, yeah. They had a data breach. How did this happen? Okay, what happened is that uh, uh, personal information of uh, their, their customers were exposed to the public. I mean, I'm talking about uh, credit card information, medical information, uh, uh, social security number, and all those things, all those personal, personal information, they were exposed. And these are the information that our cars make use of. I'm sure some of us, we are aware of these things, how the so-called Yahoo boys make use of our people's uh, credit cards and they use it to make purchases online without you being aware of it. All you just be getting is credit alerts. I mean, debit alert rather. You'll be getting the de debit alert upon debit alert. It happens in Nigeria too. Even though we don't have a credit card, they get a hold of your debit card information the next thing you start getting is a debit alert. How did it happen? It's, it happened through um, somebody gained access to a web application firewall. And it was misconfigured by probably those that set it up. Meanwhile, this person that gained access to it happened to be a former employee of AWS. So he knew his way around it. What was the impact of this breach? There was a financial cost. The company lost uh, about $150 million to Remedia and Lega Fish. You know, people sued them. Also, they had reputation issue. Their reputation was uh, damaged. They had loss of customer trust and market values. Uh, also, they were slammed with a uh, regulatory sorry actions, about eight million dollar fine by. Uh, the OCC, which happens to be the regulatory body. Uh, Capital One suffered a significant data breach. It happened in 20, 2019. And the number of people's um, uh, customers data, I mean, customers that, that their data were exposed was over 100 million customers. How could this have been mitigated? Assuming uh, the ad configuration management, they went through their configurations, they had maybe monitoring and logging system, they put in 
correct access, control system, you know, or intrusion detection system, and they have a big, uh, I mean, a good incident response plan, you know, probably this would have been avoided. You can, you can read more about this through this uh, link here. If you want the link, I can provide it to you later on. There is future trends in cloud security. We talk about uh, using AI. All of us know what AI is about by one way or the other. You can use AI and machine learning to predict, detect, and respond to security threats more effectively. We are talking about uh, automation here too. You know, if automation could help to detect if if the right infrastructure was put in, play, in place, it, it could have helped to detect uh, the intrusion and everything that the hacker was trying to do could have sent an alert to one of the tech guys or to the right email address or phone number telling them that something is about to happen or something is already happening so that it could be mitigated at least if you reduce the impact of the hack on their infrastructure. And then there's something called a zero trust architecture. Uh, it's a security model that assumes no trust and fair revise everything continuously. It's validating the security posture of user devices and application. This just assumes that uh, uh, it doesn't trust anyone. So even if, if you are the one that set it up or you are the manager, you are this, you are that, it doesn't trust anyone. You just want to verify every time you want to get access to it. You have to go through different, different uh, check before you gain access into it. Uh, there is a uh, quantum computing. Uh, the preparing for the potential impact of quantum computing and encryption standards and developing quantum resistant encryption models. Uh, I think uh, quantum computing is a new thing now, and we need to start preparing for it. Moving on. Okay. I think that's the end of my presentation. Uh, do you have question before I push out my own question? I have some questions here. I hope you guys can hear me. I believe. Yes, you can. Thank you for yes, a very hear. wonderful presentation. So please, do we have questions just like here? Yes, okay, so I guess the silence means we do not have questions. And, um, Sorry, Victoria. Good morning. Uh, good, mo good morning, everyone. Good morning, Daniel. Um, Paula Wale, thank you very much. I have a question, but I'm quite in a noisy area and I'll find it difficult to type. But that was a wonderful uh, presentation. Maybe next time I will ask my question. I'm on my way to uh, for my PPA. I was rejected to a place I was posted yesterday, so I'm going to a new place now. Maybe probably to get how possible I'll be undergoing it, but I'll, maybe I'll ask my question next time. But thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. I had a, I had a hard time listening to it anyways, but my earpiece helped me a lot. Thank you. Okay, so I actually have a question. Um, my question is related to your previous slides when you spoke about ways we can call from this... Um, access to ways we can call um, cyber threats. And uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned using um, AI and machine learning methods. So my question is based on, is there, is there 
on the app, okay, or it kind of AI um, generate an application that can automatically do this because what you mentioned was maybe using HTTP secure applications for um, programs, maybe anything you're building, you try to add HTTP secure um, applications into it. But I'm asking now, is there is there any AI tool that can be used to check these things, these cyber threats? Okay, um, for your uh, cloud uh, infrastructures, uh, there, are, there are some tools that are available, provided by uh, cloud providers, cloud service providers, like uh, AWS has these uh, uh, IAM tools, uh, Azure as uh, Active Directory, Google Cloud also has uh, IAM, and there are other tools too that are that are pro. I mean, that are readily available, provided by uh, service providers and some other third parties. Like uh, there is this uh, Azure Key Vault. There is also Google Cloud Key Management. There is uh, there are many there are many of them. Just to mention a few. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so I guess these questions are for us. Please let's attempt the questions. Okay, the first question: Can anybody? Can you guys see which of the following best practices for enhancing cloud security? En encrypting data both in transit and addresses to be okay. That's that's correct. That's correct. Uh, how about the second one? Your IT team is looking to enhance security in your cloud environment. Which of the following tools and technologies can be used? Tolani, please, not you. Someone else. Uh, my qualified to answer the question. No. Someone okay. else. Since, you, since you're denying the infrastructure team from responding to the question, let me try. I think you've already answered that when you mentioned the AWS, I am the Google, I am the AWS security. So I guess that's the answer. Okay, that's the answer. So. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending.